Hello guys, I'm Super Ron. Welcome back to the channel and we're gonna carry on a little bit on this Mustang. You saw it in a previous episode. I had a hell of a job getting this engine out. We diagnosed it when it's in the car that it had a hydraulic lifter failed, but the problem with this car in particular, it's had a rack and pinion steering set up and coil over front suspension added, and they've welded in a cross member, which is not removable, which means it hugs the engine, you can't move the engine about, and you can't get the sump off. So I had quite the adventure getting this out in the last episode, but we got it out, and now we need to look at getting the cam out because that hydraulic follower that broke actually mustroomed over, so we couldn't lift it out the top. So we're gonna have to take the camshaft out, and drop the follower down into the sump, which now the engine is out, we can get the sump off. The fun and games didn't stop after that episode because even just getting it on the engine stand, of course, this being an American car, everything is Imperial. So I needed some long bolts to put it onto the engine stand, which are Imperial. Lucky we've got a classic bike guy next door. So he had some old Imperial bolts that I could cut up and chop up. And then when I had all the bolts ready, I went to put it on the stand and the bell housing is so big, the stand didn't have the span to reach the bell housing bolts. So then I had to make new arms for the engine stand. And then finally, we got this huge hunk of iron onto the stand. Now this is no normal Mustang engine. It had a lot of high performance parts. It had Edelbrock Performer RPM heads with colossal valves in them. It's got upgraded roller rockers on the top and upgraded competition push rods. We're not sure if the bottom end is standard spec or not. We're gonna open it up, have a measure up and see what else it needs. Because we're down to this stage, we might give the bores a freshen up at the same time. So now it's up on the stand, we need to strip this down a little bit more and see if we can get to this camshaft. got the water pump, the fuel pump, and the pulley for the belts all off. They weren't too bad. We need to find a big puller to get this pulley off, because it is well on there. So I think for now, if we whip it over, try and get this sump off. Just drain the oil out again, because this has got two sump plugs, one for the front sump and one for the rear. You can see the rear has taken a bit of a beating because it's just so low to the floor. See if we can fix that when it's off. If it's got this really awkward cut out, and that's to get over this steering rack conversion. So these huge engine mounts, and that's sat over this cross member for the coilover suspension, and hugged the steering rack as well. It just made it a nightmare to get it out. So. This sump's never been off since we've had it because we haven't been able to get it off. So let's see what is in there. And off it comes. It is well stuck on there. No sign of our lifter just yet. Here's what's left of it, and that should have another bit on the bottom, somewhere in here. I lined all the bolts up because sometimes in a sump, they're different length for different thicknesses. And if you put the wrong one in, obviously it's gonna bottom out or not be long enough. But it looks like these are pretty much all the same. It's had a couple of replacements 
put in, which are slightly different, but almost the same. So I think they should be all the same size, but I'll stab them in a box and make sure they all go back in the same place because then we'll know we'll be okay. Bit of sludge and old gasket in the strainer. But not too bad. Let's carry on investigating. Managed to get the bottom pulley off. Cheap little Chinese puller. That did the job. It was well on there. Pulled off all the keyway and everything looks perfect. So now we can get this front cover off. And that is the timing gear. Must admit, this is my first push rod engine. Maybe old, but it's certainly simple. So now we should be able to undo that bolt, pull the chain off, and hopefully get the camshaft out. And now, if everything that I've said on YouTube is right, this should slide out. Make sure that lifter's out of the way. Here it comes. Wiggle. And we are out. So that's the cam lobe. It's had the lifter missing. I think we've got away with it. It doesn't look any worse than any of the other ones. See if this lift will drop down now. Yes. So this with the hole in it and the end missing should look like this. You can see where the cam's been rubbing on it. Bird it over. And that's why we couldn't get it out the top, like these ones slide out the top. But I still haven't found that bottom bit. Let's continue searching. Well, I still can't find the bottom of that lifter, which is a bit of a puzzle. I just have added another look at the cam, and it is a bit more damaged than I thought. If you look at this one, it's got nice square edges, all the way around. This is the one that had the broken hydraulic follower. See they're rounded over. It should be nice and square, like that one. But this one has had all the corners rounded off. Luckily, there is a competition cams part number on the end. So we should be able to get another one. So I haven't really found anything catastrophic in there. Just that one hydraulic lift has failed and that has unfortunately munched the cam. But engine wise, can't really find anything scored. We may pop out the pistons because we're at this stage, just a set of rod bolts, and if we do, just need to give it a freshen up, because we've got no idea when the engine was built. Just seems silly not to. Well, I've looked all inside, outside, underneath, on top, and I'm not sure where the end of this lifter is. I've cleaned out the sump, looked in all the gated bit, underneath, where it falls from the cam, that'll just go straight down. So, not sure. Got everything boxed up, labelled up. Everything's in separate bags. Organisation is always key. 
I've kept the chain all in the same place, although it does look pretty simple to tie them up. It's got some little marks on the teeth. And I've made a note where all the bolts go, where longer ones and shorter ones. So it'll know where we put them on. The clutch is a bit worn, so we'll put a new one of them on. The flywheel is absolutely massive. You can see why I had to make extra arms for the engine stand. Just colossal. A bit of bad news on the cam. Now I've cleaned it up, I can see that it is a bit more worn than we thought. If you look on these ones, they've got a nice crisp corner on them. But the one that was worn is this one. You can see the lobes really rounded over. These have got nice sharp edges where the lobe comes up. On this one where it's been rubbing on the side of the what was left of the lifter, that's just rounded it over. Luckily, we've got some part numbers on the end, competition cams, so we should be able to get a new one with not too much problem. But it is just a whopper. It's been really cool working one of these V8 American engines. I've not worked on anything like this before, and it always seems so strange just to have a single camshaft, only two valves per cylinder, which is exactly the setup the LSs still use, but it's just so simple. So if it works, why change it? I've taken the distributor out a few times on this, and I noticed there's a really long shaft in the bottom of it. It runs off the camshaft here. There's a little cog on the end, which meshes with the distributor. But then there's a long bar that came out of the distributor, and I was always a bit worried about it dropping down in there. But now I've got everything off, I can see that it's the oil pump here underneath and that shaft goes through the middle of the distributor all the way down and runs the oil pump as well. So it's been really cool just finding out these kind of things. It's going to be nice and easy to put back together, nice and easy to time up, just one crank, one cam. You can't get any easier than that. There is a bit of a lip on the bores and you can see there is somewhere in there. It's not bad, bad, but we're not sure the age of this engine, when it was rebuilt, when it had all the go faster heads put on. So we probably will drop the pistons out as well, just to have a look and we might give the bores a refresh, check the shells. As we're to this point, it just seems silly not to, just to drop a rod off, pull the piston out, we can then check all the shells, check all the rings. Also, since the last episode came out, while we were actually working on this, it had a really bad smoking problem coming out of one side of the exhaust and no compression in number eight cylinder. So when I took the rocker covers off and saw the hydraulic lifter was just flat out and the inlet take valve wasn't open, everyone's kind of agreed that what was happening, the inlet valve wasn't opening, so the engine was still doing its cycle. And when it was pulling down on the induction stroke, the inlet valve was closed so it's just making a huge vacuum in the chamber, which was actually sucking oil from underneath through the rings into the combustion chamber, compressing that, and then firing out the exhaust on the exhaust stroke, because the exhaust valve was still opening. So every time it's on the induction stroke, the intake valve was stuck shut because there was no push rod pushing it open because the hydraulic lifter wasn't following the cam, filling the cylinder with oil and then pumping it out the exhaust. And that's also why it's showing low compression because it had nothing to compress. It was pulling down, couldn't get any air in. All that was coming up was a little bit through the rings. So that's why it's showing a low compression test. So not the normal assumption you'd get from a smoky exhaust, low compression on a cylinder, was actually just because a hydraulic lifter failed and it just happened to be the inlet. But overall, I think we've got away with it. It hasn't scored where the hydraulic lifters sit. I think if we tried to pull that out topwards where the end was mushroom over, that would have made a real mess of this channel here where they sit because it's a machined surface. So by taking the cam out, letting that drop down, I think we've saved the block. All the bores look pretty good. You can still see the home marks. There is just a little bit of a lip at the top. But the main thing, I can't get over these, is how big everything is. The cylinders, the pistons are absolutely massive to used to working with. And the same with the cylinder head because there's just two valves per cylinder. The inlet valves, absolutely colossal. So it's always pretty cool to work on something new. And just to put it into perspective, while we're having so much trouble getting this on the stand, the size of this massive V8 engine, this is a two litre 16 valve Vauxhall engine here. You see the size difference in the pistons, even in the length of the block, just colossal. Here's the cylinder heads. So this is what we're used to, nice 16 valve, four valves per cylinder. Most of the Audi stuff we work on is five valves per cylinder, so you've got an extra inlet valve as well. And then you've got these massive great things. The valves in this are huge. Look at it side by side. They are massive. Even the length of the block, even though they're both four cylinders. Got the head gasket on this one. That much longer. 
and while we had so much trouble getting it on the stand, there's the Mustang flywheel, and there's a Vauxhall 2 litre 16 valve flywheel. They are huge. The same with the clutch as well. Just massive. And the funny thing is, they probably make about the same power out of the factory. So I think that's gonna wrap up this episode. We've got as deep as we need to go for now. We can get back to the customer and see what they want to do, whether they do wanna freshen up the bottom end as we are that close. But the main damage we've found is just that one lift has failed. Unfortunately, that has dug into the cam and rounded over the lobe. So it's gonna need a new camshaft and a set of lifters. But apart from that, everything looks in perfect condition. Everything is okay in the top end. The heads are perfect. Can't see any catastrophic failures in the bottom end. So all in all, I think this is best case scenario. Of course, we'll get everything checked out and measured up. We'll check all the heads are flat and have a skim if they need it. And we'll measure all the bores, check they are still round. But I've got a complete list of parts, everything that we need, everything that I've took off, the gaskets for it all. And of course, all the specs of the cams, the lifters, pistons and the engine. So we can get all that bits ordered. Some bits may have to come from America, but we've been good so far. There's a few Mustang places in the UK where we have been able to get parts for this. So hopefully they can sort us out and we can get all this back together. So make sure you subscribe because of course I will be filming, putting it all back together. Give this video a like. It's been a much easier day than it was getting the engine out. Still got lots more to do, lots more cars to finish. So I'll put links to AutoShack's Facebook page and that where we've uploaded all our progress on everything we've got in the workshop. But until next time, make sure you have fun.